Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, welcome. Just checking if the sound is good. Looks like it. Yeah, so tonight I wanted to stream a little bit and I wanted to to talk about something that I've been uh, exploring at work. Um, and it's related with um, how could one uh, simulate uh, APTs, Advanced Persistent Threats. And uh, we tested uh, some tools. One of them was uh, MITRE's uh, own uh, Caldera. Um, we didn't really like it. Uh, we felt like it that it was a little bit limited in the amount of TTPs that he had implemented. Um, but then one uh, of uh, one ex colleague pointed us to um, a tool called Purple Team Attack Automation. And it was, I was really surprised on how good it was and how well it fitted on on the purpose on what we were looking for uh, so i decided that it would be uh, a nice uh, subject to talk about so why why would you want to simulate apts uh, so first you have to implement your defensive um, security measures, right? And um, because of that, you need to test it. You have to protect, you have to deploy, implement, configure, and then you have to test. And sometimes the testing is, is quite tricky. How can you really for sure know that the configuration, the, the tools that you deploy to monitor your systems and all are really giving you the information that you need. So MITRE did a good, in that sense, he did a very good uh, job with the attack framework. So uh, where they break down the techniques uh, associated to groupers, uh, bigger groups of tactics. Um, and they mapped those techniques to a lot of APTs and threat groups uh, currently in the wild and that have already been uh, discovered or better studied. <laughs> So what I want to show you tonight is how you could install, <clears throat> sorry, how you could install this tool, the Purple Team Attack Automation. So in, uh, in, in I'm going to call it Purple for short. Otherwise, it's going to be a long night, <laughs> repeating uh, the full name. So Purple, in its own uh, documentation, they basically say that you should use uh, Docker. Um, but I really don't like Docker. Um, well, it's not that I don't like Docker. I think it's for the purpose of the tool. I think it's a little bit overkill. It's nice if you want to just test it out and just and then kill it. But if you want to use it for a longer period, I don't really think Docker is the right solution uh, for such a small tool. And since uh, Purple is based on uh, Metasploit uh, and in, in, in a very simplistic way, it's a bunch of extra modules that they added to Metasploit plus some Metasploit specific uh, 
code modifications in order to make it work. So there's no reason why it shouldn't that shouldn't be easy um, to install. What you're seeing here, it's a fully up to date Kali Linux uh, instance. Um, I it's the two it's two thousand and nineteen dot one a. Uh, so if uh, you want to then replicate, it's easier. But the the steps are quite generic, and then you can just adapt them to your distribution of uh, of um, choice. So the first thing we want to do is to install uh, the dependencies so and keep in mind this is and nothing uh, very new as basically as i said purple is based on metasploit so leave sqlite uh, tree dev and if I remember, yeah, lead pcap is also, I think he's also missing. And I lib SSL, lib read line, zlib b1g, zlib pq. Yeah, I think that's the ones. So keeps on to basically install. And one of the things that uh, we have to be careful is that Kali already has Metasploit uh, out of the box. So we don't really want to be messing with installing um, Purple um, system wide. Uh, otherwise, we're going to get, it's going to be a pain to solve any. Uh, dependencies, conflicts, and all these sort of things. So it's just better to set up a custom environment for it. And the easiest thing to do with that, uh, to do that actually, sorry, the easiest thing to do uh, to achieve that is to use uh, rbenv. So basically, it allows you to uh, create um, separated environments to run uh, different versions of Ruby, different versions of uh, Ruby gems. So that is, is similar to Python environment as well. It has the same objectives and it, it works quite well. Uh, I'm not a Ruby guy. I'm, I have developed more Python than Ruby, but uh, it's it's very similar. The concept is the same. So, but first uh, we are going to uh, check out um, check out Purple's code automation tools or tool tool no uh, attack automation purple team uh, typing is so hard sometimes uh, and we're gonna clone it into here i probably don't need this no, well, let's try because i'm already there so i'm just gonna do this something is wrong because it's a public repository i must have typed something wrong oh yeah purple okay perfect so it's gonna clone it
it's quite a big repository, so it takes a little bit while. Um, I'm also streaming from the same connection, so <laughs> it's not helping, I guess. While this is doing, let's um, let's try to to clone. Uh, should be faster. Let's try to clone Ruby. Env slash Ruby. Env dot cheat, and we're gonna clone it to the current directory. Let's see if I find rbm rb. So, no. Okay, that's faster. And now we need another thing, uh, which is called Ruby build. And this is going to be the plugin for RBM that will um, allow you to build a custom version of Ruby. Or not a custom, a different version of Ruby because the version that Metasploit uses uh, in Kali, the, the Metasploit installed in Kali by default uses is different from the one uh, from which the purple red team automation attack automation uh, tool is based. So I have to build it. Let's see. Still checking out Metasploit. So we have to wait a little bit. Let's go. let's go on to the next step then. So let's assume everything has uh, all the code has been uh, downloaded. Uh, one of the things that um, uh, the documentation of RBMF tells us to do is to set up uh, in order to set up the environment in order to be able to use. Um, the different versions of Rubies and uh, the different gems installed and whatnot is to set up an environment in uh, the environment using bash uh, RC file, but that's um, a file that affects the entire session of a user. And since I'm not going to use a dedicated user for that, I'm, I'm just using my normal uh, Kali uh, user or I'm not using a, def, uh, a, sp a dedicated user to run purple. I'm just going to create um, one dedicated file for that. Uh, of course, uh, I think it already finished the checkout. No, still checking out code. So just, and I'm going to call it env init. So first things. Ashbang, 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 bin bash. So, okay. The next thing is we want to change the path, and we want it to be uh, uh, slash bin. So we want it to pick up the different Ruby versions and all these sort of things. I'm missing. Today I'm failing a little bit at the keyboard. Okay, so. Mm -hmm, that's it. Now we still continue to modify the path and we're going to modify it. Uh, so that it picks up the purple um, purple zone metasploit implementation and not the system one. So we don't have to always be 
in the cor in the um, in purple's uh, path to run it. Another thing we need is the access. Uh, there are other ways of doing this. Uh, one could run it under the context of the PostgreSQL user, um, but I prefer to do it like this. Uh, so basically, for you, we, for us, to initialize a Metasploit database, we need access to the PG underscore CTL utility, and that utility um, is not exported by default on the path. Uh, you have to basically create a session for uh, with the to, with the post PostgreSQL user and yeah it's a little bit of unneeded work so I'm just gonna create as well and this is extra just a um, a way of me distinguishing whether I already set up the environment or not and basically I'm changing the shell and then this one this line here is very important otherwise RBM will not properly work we have to initialize it like this am I missing something let me review just to be sure I don't need this one. Need... Okay, looks legit. So just do this. Let's see if it already yep, checked out the code. So now we can live. So the first thing then uh, we need to we need to initialize the environment so we do it like this so you can see here that the the shell, the shell now tells me that i already initialize this makes it easier it's something that uh, python uh, uh, vm already does by default when you run the activate uh, script uh, but RBM doesn't have such a thing, so but it totally makes it easier. Um, uh, not sure. I'm just gonna one two two. I mean a little bit. I think looking at the stream, it seems like it's uh, a little bit small. The letters. So I'm just making them a little bit bigger so people can more easily read it. So now we need to install we need to install the specific Ruby version that is used. So you can see here by this file here that is 2.6.2, 2 .2, which is different from the version that the pre-installed Metasploit uses. So, and this will take a little bit, I think, because it has to compile. Now it's going to take a little bit. Then the, the next step is to, after we installed the right version of Ruby, um, the next step is just to uh, install all 
the gems that uh, Metasploit depends on and initialize Metasploit database. Um, to do that successfully, we'll have to use, we'll have to have our researcher as uh, belonging. We have to have our researcher being uh, a member of the PostgreSQL group. Otherwise, it will fail because um, it won't have access to some of the directories that he needs. Um, I'm not 100% sure whether I already did that. So, no, I haven't. So I can do that. Uh, in, No, user mod, sorry. What was I doing? And I want to add a group. Uh, post Greece. Um, oh, sorry. My bad. So now if we see in the group file under yep looks good i'll probably have to i'll probably have to create a new session though because it's not gonna yeah uh, Maybe if I use this, let's try that. Because otherwise I'll have to log in and uh, log out and log in um, in order for it to, yeah, okay. Let's see. And if I do like this, I'm not sure if this will refresh it. Yeah, it seems that it has uh, this trip worked. Otherwise, I'll have to log in and log out again for the PostgreSQL uh, group to be attributed to the current user. Oh, okay, I see what is going on here. Okay, yeah. Okay, fair enough. It's basically creating. Anyways, so Ruby seems to have been successfully installed. So let's just check once again. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so let's do it. New GRP. Um, post. Grace. Uh, now I have to initialize the environment again. Now, gem, we need to install bundler because that's what we're going to use then to get all, meta, all the gems that Metasploit needs. Okay, I think now bundler. Yep. Install. Let's install all the gems. So if there's any dependencies that we are missing, we're going to have some errors and then we'll have to, to install it. It's going to take a little bit while, a little while, I think. Not that there's, it's just that it's a lot of dependencies, a lot of gems that need to be installed, a lot of Ruby gems. While that is running, I'm gonna try and I'm gonna 
loads the virtual machine that we're gonna target afterwards. So let me see. The snapshots are good. Okay, seems legit. Gonna target the Windows 10 uh, machine. So So as everybody knows, the password is always enter to, so well, just different resolution, so that's why it's going a little bit cray cray. So let's just move things a little bit around. So it changed <laughs> the position of all the icons. Um, but yeah, so this looks good. Oh, one of the things we want to do, because it's going to make our life a lot easier, is to turn off the antivirus. Uh, I'm not going to do anything um, to manage settings, I think it's in. To make this the metasploit payload that we're gonna generate uh, undetected by antivirus, so I'm just gonna disable it for now because it's just for testing and to showing to show you guys how to do this. So it's still installing stuff. Yep. It seems. Yep, all gems installed successfully. So now the next thing to do is just init uh, the da database, the Metasploit database. Um, you have to be careful though, because if you already are using uh, the Metasploit database uh, by using um, the pre installed Metasploit, you might override any uh, loot or information that you already have on that database. So uh, anyways, just a warning. In this, in my case, I don't really care. I don't have anything there that... Uh... So it's going to create... And for all intents and pur purposes, purple doesn't need the database, but I really hate the small warning that you get every time you run Metasploit and you don't have um, you don't have the database running. So, so now from this point onwards, Metasploit is initialized, is installed, is uh, anyways purple. For all intents and purposes, purple is installed. So the next thing you want to do um, is to just generate a simple payload. Uh, if I knew how to write interpreter, there's HTTPS and the architecture is x64, platform is Windows. And then I forgot to see what, what was my IP address. Um, so it ends on 138. So, local host is 
this one nineteen two one sixty eight dot twenty T Oh yeah, just forgot the IP address again. My bad. One thirty eight I think, right? Yeah, one thirty eight. Lol. One thirty eight and then the port is let's do like this. So you're not fooling anybody with the settings, uh, so that's why I disabled the antivirus. Oh, okay, my bad. Forgot to redirect. Redirect the output to an executable. Let me see if, um... Yeah, looks like it. I think it was successful. So now let's just launch MSF console. Now we're gonna basically start the interpreter reverse um, connection handler. So we're going to exploit multi handler, going to set the payload as a Windows. Come on, Windows. The interpreter. And it is a reverse. I just noticed that I wrote the executable name wrong, but it's okay. So I'll set a host in 38, then set L port 8443. See here. And then let's exploit in the background. So just confirm everything is running. Can I do this from here? I think I can, yeah. So everything seems to be running nicely. So what we want to do now is basically copy the payload that we generated uh, but before that i'm just gonna rename it properly uh, let me see if i have the shared folders the vmware shared folders set up look so so let's just copy so now if we go into our windows machine should have around here in the malware this one so we we'll are we are going to run it as administrator because some of the um, uh, ttps or some of the modules that implement the ttps uh, they need administrator privileges and while we can with interpreter we can escalate privileges I really don't want to go into a rabbit hole where something is going to fail because I don't have the right privileges. So I'm just going to run it. Uh, did I did it wrong? Yeah, probably I generated the payload wrong. 
Where did I? I probably did generate the payload, no. I must be missing something, so let's just try again. Windows X64 Interpreter yeah. Reverse HTTPS Architecture X64 Platform Windows Oh, I see. Okay. I think I forgot the F argument, uh, flag, or option in this case. Yeah. Yeah, XC. Let's try that again. 192, 168, 23, 138, and then like this. Sure, if it's doing anything. Okay, let's try again. And yeah, I thought it was strange that uh, when I ran file on the previously generated payload, that it showed that it was a DOS. <laughs> but uh, yeah, at least now it's proper. So uh, let's try again. Oh no, why do you treat me like this? Uh, but it's turned off, so it should still allow us to run. Hmm. No, turn off. Thank you. Let's try to copy the file again. Uh, let's run it. Come on. Don't be there. Mean to me. Okay. Now we should have a shell. Or maybe not. Did I forgot something? I disabled everything. Interesting. And I generated the payload. 138, 
what might be the problem with this VM. Maybe it's maybe I f I don't have it in the right network. So let me just confirm that. Yeah, I'm, I don't have it in the right network. That's why it's it wasn't working. Now I should have a bunch of shells popping up on the other side for sure. Uh, what are the, yeah, now I am in the right network. Okay, cool. So my bad, sorry about that. I forgot to double check. I had it in another network. So let's close this, close this. And, and for sure, yep, bunch of sessions opened uh, of all the failed attempts. So sessions, I'm going to kill session number two, session number three, Let's see how many interpreters we still have running yeah only one perfect so so now basically we have an interpreter shell and this is pure man exploit there's nothing new about it uh, you can get the info uh, of the target machine um, it's well it's man exploit so nothing nothing new so what is new is this use post exploitation windows purple and that's why i like to make, to reference the tool as purple or not purple team attack automation um and now if you tap tap you can see all the ttps all in this case all the techniques that uh, purple supports so let's say you want to mimic apt28 uh, because you know mother russia um, then what you do is you leverage the mitre attack framework so if you come here, MITRE attack, attack framework, you can see here basically all the tactics, initial access, execution, persistence, privilege escalation, and so forth. And then you see all the techniques that are available, right? So let's say you wanted to and then simulate APT28, right? So if you come here to groups and then APT28, aka Sophocy, aka uh, Fancy Bear, whatever, you have here all the techniques that are used by this group, right? And of course, purple um, doesn't implement all of the techniques that are present on uh, on the on the Maya attack framework, but it does implement a lot of them. So we can choose. I don't know. Let's see the PowerShell one. This is a, an easy one and it belongs to the tactic execution. And it's number in terms of technique, it's the ID T1086. And you can see here APT28 downloads and executes PowerShell scripts. And it's quite actually common of various groups and tools as well um, so uh, 
So let's just try and use it. So T1086, I think they it exists. Yeah, it exists. So if you do info, you can see here, basically is the PowerShell. And you can see uh, PowerShell, it's from the execution uh, tactic and the technique is to use PowerShell um, to run other processes and whatnot. So if we set the session to number one, uh, let's see if I can be quick about it. Maybe you can see the effects. Let's run it. I'm not sure if this is the one that spawns a calculator. No, probably not. No, this was just running PowerShell. Mm. So which one would run a calculator? So I think it's easier if we come to the purple theme attack. Automation, and by the way, it's from this company, uh, which I'm not even going to try and pronounce the name. Uh, it's a U.S.-based company, apparently, uh, and they they basically do a lot of things related with cybersecurity. They have actually quite a lot of uh, uh, repositories. Uh, open source repositories, but uh, they seem legit. So it's nice that they put out such a nice tool. Mm. And now what I want, I think it's in the wiki, available modules, yeah. Let's see if there's any one module that spawns, a, that looks like it's going to spawn a calculator. Maybe schedule task. Oh, okay, redirects to, but let's try. 1053. 1053. Now let's set the session. Let's run it. Ooh. Probably the antivirus kicked in again. I'm not sure if it's still running the interpreter. I don't think it is. Yeah. I think the antivirus already killed it again. Jeez. Even though it's disabled. Yeah, it failed. Okay, let's... Let's try again. Really fast. It's probably gonna kill it anyways. So. Okay, we should have another session, no? Mm. Oh, bollocks. Mm. As I said, you're not fooling anybody with the default interpreter options. So, okay, perfect. Let's now use and set the session to number four, run. Yep, you can see here, popped calculator, 
<laughs> killed it calculator and you can see here the output so so as you can see um, it's it's quite easy to to start using this tool um, the installation to me it's a lot easier if we if one does it without using docker because docker just it's i think it's a little bit too much um, in principle if you use something like uh, sysmon and um, we could probably try that okay let's try that let's try to use sysmon configuration file uh, some sysmon configuration file install it because there are a lot of sysmon configuration files out there that already have a mapping to the MITRE attack framework so we might as well just test it out as well and see what uh, what comes out of it um, so sysmon I think his name was Olaf something yep this one how many this guy is a legend as well I guess where he's from he's from the Netherlands so so if we go into sysmon configs so a big shout out to him he's doing awesome work by the way uh so no sorry i have to download it properly um, so let's put it in here and now we need the sysmon utility download now let's just test this one out so I want to copy the sysmon configuration file and the sysmon Now let's come here. And let's move it here. Let's unpack. Let's move here. CMD run as administrator. Uh, I said like this, probably. So what we want. Okay, so what we want is to do sysmon i and then the config file. Okay, let's try that. I agree. Okay. Hmm. I might need to start this as an admin as well. Event, oh. 
event viewer. Now I need to figure out where where does sys1 go, logs go. Not in here, probably application service logs. Applications and services logs. Anyways, let's let's try to run it again. Windows. Oh, maybe it's under Windows. Okay. Let's see where is it. Let's hope it's somewhere in S. Yeah, here it is. Sysmon operational. Here we go. So we use TTP 1053. So 1059 common line interface. And you can see here so we already start to have some indicators that match the activity we saw here from the output. You can see here executing this specific command and you can see it here. And that's 1059. And if we go to 1059, uh, techniques, enterprise, and it should be on execution. So. Mm, let's see. Maybe it's already here. Common line interface, you can see here. So it does have a proper uh, mapping. Let's see if we can see the, the 1053, specifically 1053.
create new modules for them. Is why do we know all the time? What I wanted to show you guys is. Thank you. 